Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and today we are headed to Seattle, Washington for the first of our Water Talk series. We go above and beyond at swimming pools and just explore different facets having to do with water. Uh, today we're going to be looking at saltwater fish tanks with my Uncle Bob, who builds custom fish tanks up in Seattle, Washington, uh, so it should be pretty fun. All right, let's go. Dude, what's up, man? Ready to rock? Let's go, uh, Let's do this. Hey guys, it's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and we are here with my Uncle Bob up in Seattle from Green Planet Fish Tanks. And Bob, the reason I wanted to do this was because fish tanks, much like swimming pools, you've got to deal with circulation, filtration, and water chemistry. However, you guys walk a much finer line than we do as far as balancing those chemicals, don't you? Correct, correct, yeah. Anything you can make a mistake on, well, you know, you can lose two or $3,000 overnight and it basically puts you right out of the hobby real fast, you know? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the water chemistry involved here because A, you want a nice clean fish tank, you don't want cloudy water, you don't want, you don't want mold and moss building up on top of all your, all your rocks and your, your sea and enemies and things like that, but you, you also don't want to kill the fish or, or any of the coral or anything. So, right. so yeah. what are we talking here as far as pH and alkalinity and things like that in a saltwater tank? Well, basically what you're doing is you're looking for, you know, you're, you're trying to mimic where these fish and these and enemies and corals come from. You're just trying to basically make the best environment you can give them. And uh, it's at a point where you just basically, you have to make sure you have to mimic all that. So basically filtration is key. Uh, basically making sure the water is basically out of there every day because you've got evaporation. Anytime the water evaporates, the salt level is going to go higher and that will kill the fish so you're kind of balancing like you said a, a tight line but you're basically you know you have to make sure you, you do everything that the fish really need and what, what they need and what they come from and what they need to survive so you know as far as pumps go you've got to basically you know turn this tank over circulation wise usually 10 15 times a day as far as circulation goes yeah and and you know you, 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 you want to feed these fish you want to get the food in you want to get the food out you keep that water as clear as you can you want to change about 10 15 percent uh, of the aquarium water every week uh, you want to make sure you use filter socks if you use those you want to change those out twice, sometimes three times a week, you know? So it's, it, so it's interesting. On a swimming pool, you know, we, we help to, to turn the water over maybe two or three times a day. You're talking almost ten times that for, for a fish tank. Right, right. And, and it's just and it's a fraction of the gallon size. So very big turnover rates on a swimming pool or on, on, a, on a saltwater tank. And the t touch a little more on the filtration systems. You know, in pools we use cartridge, we use DE, sand. we use sand filters. Right. What what types of filter media are you using on a saltwater fish tank? Well, like this? basically, it's it's you, you, the filter media we use basically is filter socks. That's the main thing. You want that to catch you know the the main any type of waste that the fish will put off as well as the uneaten food. And and when that goes into that, you want to get that out, obviously because uh, that that's going to turn into ammonia basically is uh, everything has to be balanced out because you have to have good bacteria in there to consume that ammonia, the fish waste and whatnot, the pee the fish put out, yeah. the poop, and, um, and the feeding because the customer will always overfeed the aquarium. I mean, that's, the fish will swim up to the tank, they'll look at you and they, hey, feed me, feed me. Just like a dog. Yeah, that, you know, they get, they, they get you trained, you know, it's not you training the fish, you know, and you know, the big thing for, for me, what I've learned, in his hobby is I'm just trying to make this so much easier for the customer so that way they're not you know getting frustrated when we set up an aquarium sure. in, their, in their home you want to make sure that that tank is going to be pretty much foolproof so when our maintenance guy comes in takes care of the fish does his thing you don't have a customer calling you back you know right away saying hey yeah what the hell you know what's going on mm -hmm. okay. so from a maintenance standpoint now you know in swimming pools you know we have swimming pool science. We take care of about 200 pools a week. Our guys are out doing anywhere between 10 and about 18 pools a day. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of weekly maintenance uh, commitments are we looking at for, for a fish tank, say this this tank behind us? Well, this 580-gallon tank behind us basically it requires that it would be gravel vac, kind of like we would use a vacuum in a swimming pool, but you're using a, a cylinder with a tube on it and that draining into, say, a garbage can or a bucket and you're siphoning out the debris and stuff that lands on the gravel. 
Now, with this, we, we have, you know, we have 10 times t uh, turnover as filtration goes, but the circulation in here, we probably have about 30 times that wow. per, uh, you know, per day. And so that keeps the movement, keeps all the detritus, fish waste, mm -hmm. all that stirred up, and it gets it up into the water column. And then eventually the filter socks filter it out and get it out of there. As well as there's a protein skimmer. Uh, we set up a refugium. Basically a refugium is, is where a tank that's down below, the water drains into it, and then we have plant life in there, and, and the algae actually grows and consumes that. Mm -hmm. So you get everybody biologically, it's everybody's ticking on the same page. You know? Yeah. So a little more than just brush skin, backwash, and, and, and toss in some chemicals. Or Correct. Correct. A little bit more to it, probably a little bit of a, a bigger time commitment, and that and you know on, on our swimming pools if we goof up the water chemistry a customer might say hey you know it's, it's funny my bathing suit looks like it got bleached or my, my skin was itchy yeah. you goof up the water chemistry here and it can be hundreds sometimes thousands, thousands. of dollars and, and, and lives at stake yeah you know yeah. well and, and for instance like here I was telling Josh earlier you you're looking here you don't see any fish you know this is the third time since we set this tank tank up in three months that we've gone through what they call a marine velvet parasitic phase and we brought in one fish that had that marine velvet on it, and next thing you know, the whole tank's got it. So in order to eradicate it without killing the corals and killing all the, you know, the shrimps and whatnot in there, you, you have to literally pull the fish out and put them in a copper treatment. They're actually being treated by copper. Okay, yeah, and that's similar to what we use in the swimming pool industry mm -hmm. is a copper-based algicide right. to treat those those microparticles and those, those pathogens. So. So uh, some interesting commonalities there for sure. Um, talk to us a little bit about the plumbing. It, the plumbing I see on your on your tanks is, is really familiar. It's what we see on a lot. What I see on a lot of swimming pools. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, growing up with you know your Uncle Kenny and Uncle Joe, you know, my your dad. You know, basically I learned a lot. You know, over time and having some cool business experience myself years ago. I learned how to plumb pipe and I learned how to put it together and you know and, and I. I like everything plumbed in with a rigid plumbing, you know, I don't like the flex pipe, I, I, I don't, last last thing I want to do is to have this tank fail and all this water goes all over the floor and we've got a huge mess, you know, so we, you know, everything's rigid plumbing, uh, it's, um, you know, I've got check valves, uh, we've made it so that basically the check valves can be taken off yeah. and replaced and cleaned out every six months to say a year. Mm -hmm. Because over time, crustaceans and stuff start to build up in the, in the flapper in there. Didn't even think of that. Yeah. So then, when it goes off, it basically it's going to seep, and eventually yeah. that water is going to go. Yep. So a leak on a swimming pool that can be a pain in the butt, or maybe a high water bill. A leak on a saltwater tank, you're looking at a major insurance incident right there if you're right. not careful. Yeah. So, yeah. so wow, some incredible stuff here, Bob. And you make an incredible tank, custom designed these tanks in these. Infinity Edge tanks, it just look, it looks like a cube of water just floating in suspension is just, yeah. that's an incredible design. That's kind of something you came up with on your own. Well, I did years ago, you know, and I haven't seen it out there, and I'm sure it's out there. Anybody can build anything, really. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my, what I wanted to do is I basically, as I've gone through and working day and night in this, in this hobby, turning it into a business, uh, I've learned that making everything foolproof and have second back and up back it, uh, backup plan and having everything well thought out and still you don't have it well thought out after all but you know you're still running problems but you want to try to make the whole tank really foolproof so that way the customer doesn't get frustrated like i was saying earlier and wants to get out of the mm -hmm. hobby once say if this had happened on a customer's tank you know, we, I was telling Josh, we'd have to tear this, drain this all the way out. We'd have to put fresh water in there after taking everything out of it. Put fresh water in and let it run for like two or three weeks of fresh water just to kill that bacteria. Wow. Or the, and that parasite, rather. And yeah. then we'd have to restart it all over again with new fish, everything, you know. And it's not cheap. I mean, there's probably, just this in, in this aquarium, there's probably seven, eight grand there alone. Yeah, wow. the stuff that we had in the fish. So know. a little more involved. You get uh, when you get a parasite or something something in there that you don't want. You can't right. just bomb it with chlorine like we do in the swimming pool industry. It is a it is a whole process. Well, I'll tell you what. Filtration, circulation, and water chemistry. Some of the key principles involved in swimming pools. You'll also find in saltwater tanks. 
And uh, guys, if you're in the Seattle area and you're interested in getting into saltwater tanks or you want to have one built, shoot us an email and I'll put you in touch with Bob here and we'll get you all squared away. I'm Josh Mall for Swimming Pool Science. Bob, thanks so much, man. Hey, buddy. Thank don't, you. Thanks don't forget for to like, share, and subscribe, everyone. Yeah.